Nat commented the way sometimes making pattern doesn't make sense. Okay, Nad. Let me try and break this down so it makes sense to you, okay? And please, Nad, if you're watching, this is the time for you to pay really close attention to everything I'm about to say. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. If you know how the world is created, you will know that the world is created in duality. And when I mean duality, saw my hand. Everything is created in truth. You have male, female, positive, negative. You have birth, death, beginning, endings, up, down. You have the right, left. You have light. You have dark. You have day. You have night. The list goes on and on and on. Everything is created in duality. So is the human body. Now let's take a look at the human body. You can see that the human body, either a male or a female, has the same type of human body, which is everything has the front and the back. So when creating an outfit or marking on a pattern, these are the things you need to consider. You need to consider that the human body has the front, it has the back, it has the right side of the body, the left side of the body, it has the upper part of the body, the lower part of the body. So on this video, I'm going to try and break it down to you, Nad, how to draft a basic pattern or the upper part of the body, okay? We're going to ignore the lower part of the body and really focus on the upper part of the body. Let's go. Now, looking at the upper part of the body, when you're creating a pattern or marking on the fabric, you have to first of all consider two measurements, the length and the width. Okay, so when you look at the um, upper part of the body, the first thing you see is the head. Let's ignore the head because this pattern does not have a hoodie. There's no hoodie. 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 There is not going to be hoodie attached to it. So let's talk about from the neck downwards. Okay, so when you look at the um, upper part of the body, you see that the first measurement you see is the neck and the shoulder. So when creating a pattern or marking on your fabric, the first thing you need to do is indicate the length. Place the tape from your shoulder down to the point where you want your pattern or your um, length to stop on the fabric. Find it out on the body, okay? And once you have that measurement, now you're going to determine how wide your pattern is going to be or how wide your fabric is going to be. And how do you do that? Look at your body again. Here is the biggest part on this, your upper part of the body. Look at it. For me, the biggest part is my bust. So what I will do is I will take the measurements round my bust, find out what I have. For me, it's 36. I'll divide 36 by 4. And now I'll add extra 3 to 4 inches allowance to that measurement. And that is how wide my pattern is going to be. So since my bust, my round bust is 36, divided by 4 gives you 9. So I'm going to add 4 to 9. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So my pattern is going to be 13 inches wide. And from my shoulder to the length, probably let's say 20 inches. And now you have the measurement you need for your pattern or your fabric. Once you have that sorted out, always remember that whenever we are creating a pattern, we always mark on the one side of the body, okay? This is my pattern paper. All the measurements I'm going to be marking is from my center, okay? So you have the right side of the body, you have the left side, but there is a center that demarcates these two. So what we mark is one side of the body. So if I have the measurements for my round bust, I'm going to divide that measurement by four because I'm only marking at the one side of the body. And when I, I am done marking that measurement from the one side, from the center to this side, I place this on my fabric to cut. I'll make sure that my fabric is on fold because the body has the left and the right. So it needs to be two. Not minding the fact that I have only one side, I'm just going to place that pattern on a folded fabric that has a close edge on this center. So when I open my fabric, it looks like this. Does it make sense? Nad, does it make sense now? 
so when you see us mark pattern on one side we say mark from the center front in this is what we mean mark from this point here in so when you're done marking and you place on the fabric you open up your fabric you have two now we are done with the front part of the pattern we create another pattern just like the front but with different kind of measurement probably adjusting only the armhole or either the slope or adding a zip allowance we create something like this again one side of the back do i need to stand up one side of the back like this from the center back okay so you have center back in for one side so when you open your center back like this you have two sides i don't know if this is making sense if you make sense to you not please don't forget to like this video and for any of you that is watching and you feel like this is making sense and you want to stick around to the end please don't forget to like this video subscribe if you're new and also share this video with your soulmates and yeah let's go into drafting out the main pattern for the upper part of our body Okay, so the first thing I'll be doing on my pattern paper is to mark a starting line. And to do this, I'll be marking one inch down from this top here. Okay, so grab your pattern paper. Just do exactly what I'm doing. Let's mark a starting line on the pattern paper. And for that, I'm going to be marking one inch down. So one inch down as the starting line and something you should know is the starting line is going to be it's going to be the point where the shoulder will be sitting because the first thing on our body is the shoulder okay so i'm going to level this out as shoulder shoulder line or starting line let's just say starting line so once you have your starting line, the first thing we're going to do is from this point here, now we're going to assume that this side here is the center front, okay? So this here, let me use another color of marker. So this here is the center front. Okay. So now, from this point here, I'm going to mark 3.5 inch in, and that is for my neck width. Okay. So if you are my size, you should mark 3.5 inch. But if you're a little bit bigger or more bigger than me, you should use 4 inches as your neck width. But then we are going to mark it the neck width of 3.5. So do this on your pattern. So the neck width of 3.5 inch is here. So that I'm using a green marker. So once you have your neck width of 3.5 inch, let me indicate that here. This is 3.5 inch neck width. The next thing we're going to be marking after the neck width is the shoulder measurement. Now, how do you do that? You place your tape from one point of your shoulder to the other point, and then you divide the measurement by two. So me taking my own shoulder measurement, I place the tape from this point to this point. I'm getting 14 inches. So what I'll do now is I'm going to divide 14 inches by two, and 14 divided by two gives you seven inches. And that is what you should do. So you should divide your own shoulder measurement, your own shoulder measurement by two. And we're going to be marking this from this point in, okay? You can decide to mark it from this point in, or you can minus seven from 3.5. Well, let's just mark from the center front, from the center front here in, or mark seven inches. So here is my actual shoulder measurement. So here, 14 divided by 2. That is 7. And this is it, okay? 7 inches shoulder measurement, okay? 
So once I have my shoulder measurements, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark down one inch down from the shoulder measurements. Why? Because the shoulder is not straight. From the neckline, your shoulder goes slopy. So you can see that it goes a, a little bit slopy. And for that effect, we need to mark one inch down from the shoulder measurement. And that's what I'm doing here. So I have my one inch down and this is going to be known as the slope. Now for the slope, since I have my slope here, I'm going to connect it to the neckline. That's the neck width, okay? I'm writing down everything so you understand what I am doing. So connect your slope to your neck width and you're done with this part. The next thing we're going to be marking is we're going to divide the round armhole by two. And why we're dividing it by two is the fact that one is going to sit, like when you divide the two, your round armhole by two, half of it is going to sit in the front pattern and half of it will sit at the back pattern. Okay, so my round armhole is 16 inches. So 16 divided by two, is eight inches now eight inches is going to sit in the front another eight inches at the back making it a whole of 16 okay eight plus eight gives you 16 so i'm marking eight inches down from this point i'm going down by eight inches i hope you understood what i just said now i'm just going to make a little bit of dot here why because Remember that I marked 7 inches to this point on my shoulder here, 7 inches. So I have to make sure that the 7 inches I have from here to here is the same 7 inches I have from here to here. Okay, like the same thing, this center front in, I have that 7 inches here on the armhole depth. So you can see that I am a little bit off. This is seven in, so you can see that I'm a little bit off. See, so I'll, I'll bring it back in to adjust it. Okay, see, it's the same line, but I'm coming in. Now I can connect my armhole depth to the slope using my straight ruler. And now I'll create an horizontal line and when we are ready, this is where we are going to be creating the armhole curve. Okay, so this is the armhole depth. This is armhole depth. So now that I have this, I'm going to come back to my neckline. I'm going to mark my neck depth. Remember what we marked here is 3.5 for the width now this measurement is like standard since i started learning how to sew this is how i've been seeing it okay 3.5 unless you're trying to do like some kind of a probably wrap top or you're doing something that you know requires your neckline to be a little bit wider that is when you use four or five like that okay well when it comes to creating a normal basic pattern we use 3.5 inch as the neck width and then for the neck depth the normal is three inches if you're a little bit bigger than me or a, a lot of a lot bigger than me, you can use four inches. But then the standard measurement is I'm going to be coming down by three inches for the neck depth. So you can see I place my tape on the shoulder line and then I'm coming down or the neckline, anyone you want to call this from this line, and I'm coming down by three inches here. And grab your curvula and connect this point to this point. So you're connecting the neck depth to the neck width with a curve. And let me level this out, neck depth, okay? So we are done with this. The next thing we're going to do is, we're going to be creating the curve, the armhole curve. And to do this, we're going to be looking for the middle point from here to here, okay? From this point to this point, place the tape and find your middle points on your own pattern, okay? Whatever you marked there, look for the middle points. And how do you do this? 
fold your tape into two equal parts like this okay so it is two equal parts from this point and now i have my middle point here on the middle point here i'll be marking 0 0.75 inch in okay 0 0.75 inch in and making sure it's on a like straight line but i'm going in because i need to create my curve and this is 0 0.75 okay 0 0.75 in inch okay So now that I have my 0 0.75 inch like this straight from the middle point, on the armhole depth, I'll be dividing my round bust by four and I'll mark this down on the armhole depth. Now my round bust is 36 and I'll divide 36 by four, I get nine. I'll mark it on the, I'll mark it here on the armhole depth. Okay now i can connect this 0 0.75 to this point and also from here to this point okay see how i'm going to be doing it i'll connect with a curve here first okay and now i'll connect with a straight ruler from this slope down here So, as you can see, this part is practically done. Now, let's go in and start marking the vertical measurements, like the boss points, the under boss points, and the waist points. Remember, you have all these points on your body. When you stand up straight, when you're standing like vertically straight up, you are not lying down. If I'm taking points, I'm going to start from your shoulder, I'll get to your armhole, and then I'll get to your boss points, to your under boss points and your waist, okay? That is the same thing we're about to do right now. So I'm going to place my tape from this starting line, which is the shoulder line, not the slope, not the slope. So from this line, I'll go in and mark my bust points just take a look at where my tape is and my bust point is 10 inches from my shoulder or from my starting line and i'm marking 10 inches okay so this here is my bust point so after the boss point which is your nipple point where your nipple is sitting the next is the under of your bust okay that's your under breast which is your under bust i'm going to place my tape and mark my under bust also from the starting line here not the slope okay i'll mark my under bust which is 13.5 inch i'm marking that Okay, so this here is my underbust, underbust point. So once I have my underbust point, the next is my front waist line. Now, my front waist line is different from my back waist line. My front waist line is 18 inches, and I'm going to be marking 18 inches down. Okay. Um, you can decide to mark the same waistline for your front and back for this basic pattern but for for it to actually really correspond and make sense you can just mark your front waistline or your back waistline differently okay so i'm marking my waistline and my waistline is 18 inches So this is my waist line. 
and we have all the points here so make sure you call, you cross check your pattern you have your ample with your curve do you have your bust line do you have your under bust line and do you have your waistline all from your center front So once you have all this, the next thing we're going to do is mark out the waist dart. And for the waist dart, what we're going to use to mark the waist dart is the nipple to nipple. Now, in case you don't know what the waist dart is, it's the dart that we take on the waist to connect the boss, okay, to give it a 3D fitting, like to give it a fitting that like fits your actual body, which is a 3D, okay. So we're trying to create a 3D on this pattern. And to do this, we're going to be marking the waist that and for the waist that i'm going to divide my nipple to nipple by two so placing a tape from one nipple that's from the left nipple to the right nipple i'm going to calculate what i have there and i got eight so i'll divide eight by two because this pattern is for one side of the body okay dividing eight by two i have four so i'm going to mark four on the boss point on the under boss point and on the waist point okay let me use a red marker for this so i'm marking four inches on the bust line four inches on the under bust line four inches on the waist line So this is the apex line. This line now we just rule here is known as the apex. So whenever you hear apex, the nipple to nipple line, this is it. So what I will do now is on the waist, because this is a waist that I'm going to be marking one inch in to the side and one inch in to the center front. Okay. So I'm going to mark one inch in to the side and then I'll mark another one inch. That's making sure my tape is on the apex going to this side and this side, okay? So I'll mark another one inch in on the center front. And I'm going to be connecting this to the boss. But before I connect, I'll mark one inch down from the boss, okay? Because we don't want a sharp edge on the boss when we connect to the dart. You have to do this, okay? You have to come down, come down by one inch. And the next thing you do is connect this one inch to this point, connect it to this point. Okay, so this is one inch. This is one inch. One inch. This is one inch. Okay. So connect. So this is us creating the dart legs okay so this is the dart legs and this is the waist dart so i'm just going to indicate that this is the waist dart okay so once you're able to create a pattern and create a waist dart you are good to go you're no longer a beginner you can create any type of top using this dart okay so now we have this The next thing we have to do is divide all round measurements of the points by four. Okay, the round bust, the round under bust, and the round waist. So, and each of those round measurements should sit on their points. Okay, the first I'll start with is the bust. Of course, I'm going to divide my round bust by four and I'll mark this down. So you, you remember we used the round boss when creating the curve here, okay? We marked nine inches. I marked nine inches because that's my round boss divided by four. So what I'll be doing here is I'm going to 
also mark that nine inches on the bust line because it is the round bust, okay? And I'll connect. I'll come to the underboss point. I'll divide my round underboss by four and I'll mark this down. Now, it is not necessary for you to divide your round underboss by four. You can just divide your round waist and connect the line from your boss down to your waistline. So let's do that instead, okay? So I'm just going to move down to my round waist. I'll divide my round waist by four and I'll mark this down on the waistline. So my round waist is 30 divided by 4 gives you 7.5. Now I have that here that I need to replace. Always replace your dart. So I'll calculate how many inches I have here. Okay, so I have 2 inches that I need to replace back. So I don't run out of fabric or run short of fabric. So I'm going to replace that back. And I'll connect this to the bust line. So this is it, this is it, okay, this is it. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be adding half an inch around this pattern, okay, on the armhole, on the sides, on the base, we're just going to add half an inch around this pattern and we're going to go ahead and create the back pattern okay so this is it for the front pattern very simple so this is the front pattern and we are done so let's go ahead and add the half an inch around the pattern and now you can use this pattern to you know create other kind of this can be your like your main pattern because this is going to be like my main pattern when i want to create a coset i just duplicate this pattern on another pattern and just do whatever i want to do like this this is like my original copy, okay? So this is it. Let me add the half an inch round. Okay, so now this, I have the 0 0.5 inch round the pattern. I'm just going to go ahead and cut. Okay, this is 0 0.5. Just round the pattern 0 0.5. I'm going to cut. This is my front pattern and let's go ahead and create the back pattern. Okay, so for the back pattern, this is the back pattern. I am going ahead to mark my 3.5 neck width just the same way we have on the front pattern so here is 3.5 neck width and I marked my shoulder point here okay my shoulder point just the same way on the front pattern and then I marked one inch down for the slope okay so this is the slope one inch down same way we did for the front pattern. I divided my armhole, my round armhole by 2, which is 16 divided by 2 gives you 8. And I marked from here to here my armhole depth as 8 inches. And this is its armhole depth. And then I went ahead to mark my boss point, my under boss point, and my back waistline. Now my back waistline is 16.5, which is different from the front waistline. And I have my 16.5 here and this line here indicates this line here separates the zip from the pattern. Okay, so all the lines and everything I have marked 
is from this line here as the center front line. I'm going to indicate that this is the center front. This line here is the center front. So this is my center front line and I have my zip allowance here of 1.5 inch which I'll be adjusting with you guys okay as we go along but let's do the most important thing So the next thing we're going to be marking now is the neck depth okay we have a neck width and we're going to mark in the back neck depth the back neck depth i'll be marking 0 0.75 as my back neck depth so i'll place my tip like this and i'll mark 0 0.75 down you can see where i'm marking i'm not here this is a zip allowance so i'm coming down on this line here and i'm marking 0 0.75 and I'll use my cuff to connect the 0 0.75 I have here depth to the neck width here, okay? This is the back neck line, okay? So this is my back neck line. So this is the neck depth. So once we have this done, we are done with this side. We'll come over to the armhole. What are we going to do on the armhole? The same thing we did for the front pattern. Find the middle point for the slope to the depth of the armhole. And for me, the middle point is going to be four. So fold into two. And I have my four inch here. So this is the middle point. <clears throat> Sorry, so this is the middle point so from the middle point i'm going in by 0 0.5 only okay going in on the same line by 0 0.5 and i'm going to connect this to this to the slope as for the curve connecting i'm going to divide my round bust by four and i'll mark this down on the armhole depth okay just the same way we did on the front part my round bust is 36 36 divided by four gives you nine and i'm marking nine from this line okay this is the zip allowance it has nothing to do with the actual markings okay so i'm placing my tape from here and i'm going in by nine inches okay the same thing we did on the front pattern so i have my round balls round balls divided by four here i can go ahead and use my curve last connect this point to this point to have my back and curve okay And we are done with the back and hole. So now we're going to move over to marking the dark lines. And to do this, the first thing we need to do first before we mark the dart line is to extend this armhole depth in. Okay, why are we doing this? because the back pattern the that we're going to be creating is going to start from the that chest line that's this depth here we're going to start marking our um that from there so let's extend it in so make sure you have a straight line connected from the angle depth in okay and this is going to be the new line and i'm going to call this line my chest line okay so this is going to be my back chest line ch now we have that done let's go ahead and mark the dart now for the dart you know what we did for the front pattern 
we are going to be dividing the apex okay and when i mean the apex i mean we're going to be dividing the nipple to nipple by two place your tape from one nipple to the other nipple what measurement you get divide that measurement by two and mark this in from the center front line okay avoiding your zip from the center front line go in and mark it okay i'm going to be marking four inches that is mine so I'll mark four inches on the chest line four inches on the bust line four inches on the under bust line four inches on the waist line okay so i'll connect um but i will not connect all the way to the um chest i'm just going to connect from the waist to the bust and i will be marking half an inch down from my back chest line okay i'll mark half an inch down make sure you sit on the straight line and then i'll just connect it to meet the other apex line okay so this is it and voila we are done we created the apex so let's go ahead and label this as the apex okay apex now let's mark the dots. Um, I'm going to be making use of one inch and one inch is going to be one inch to the side and one inch to the center front. So I'm marking one inch in from here and then one inch out or in from here. So these are my darts. So this is one, one, okay. So I have my one inch, one inch. I'm going to connect these dart legs to this point here, this half an inch, okay? This is 0 0.5. So I'm going to connect this. And yeah, this is what I have, okay? So this is my dart leg, and I'm just going to say this is the waist that okay so once we're done with this the last but not the least thing for me to do is divide all measurements by four and mark it down starting from the bust line I'm going to divide my round boss by four and mark it down just the same way we did for the front part time but um take note that we have that to place so go ahead and place the dart that you have as for me i'm getting less than a quarter inch i'm just going to replace that here you know on the front there was no dart to be replaced because the dart was one inch down from the bust okay but here we have a dart that is showing on the bust and we have to replace it so now i'll move over to my waistline i'll divide my round waist by four and mark this down on the waist line now every point that you're dividing the round measurements of course that point has to sit on its point <laughs> I hope you understand what I mean. So I'll divide my round waist by four and mark it down and then I'll replace my dart. Okay, never forget to do that. So I'm replacing my dart. Okay. And now I connect this to the burst like this. And voila, this is what we have. Four, we add the half an inch allowance round this pattern we have to adjust the zip okay so I have 1.5 inch here out for the zip and what I'll do is on the shoulder here or the neckline I'm going to give the one one and a half inch but then here on the waist I'm going to be marking one inch out from the center line I'm just gonna mark one inch out okay so this is my one inch out i'm going to connect the one inch now to the 1.5 sitting just here okay so we're going to we know that it is 1.5 here let's check 
Okay, so you can see that it's 1.5. So I'm going to connect this down to this point. And I think my longer ruler is going to be doing this job. So from here, the one inch to the 1.5 here, okay? Okay, so now we can add the half an inch allowance round this pattern. I can decide to add also on the zip, but I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, so let me add the half an inch round the pattern just the same way we did for the front. So now I have all the 0.5 that I need to add on my pattern. This is my back pattern. This is the back pattern. I'm just going to go ahead and cut out my pattern. And um, there's the last adjustment that I need to do, but this is going to be happening on the front. I'm not going to be doing the adjustment. I'm just going to explain why that adjustment needs to happen. Okay, okay so this is my back pattern. And this is my front pattern. I'm going to explain something which I'm going to be explaining on, an, on another pattern that I'll be creating for my, um, that is going to be having the boss that because this pattern is just for us to create a pattern with the waist that, but not the boss that. Now I'm going to be explaining something about the boss that. Now if you want your pattern to have a boss that, you're going to find the difference between the front waistline and the back waistline. My front waistline here is 18 inches. My back waistline here is 16.5. Now, 18 inches minus 16.5 gives you 1.5. Now, to make this both pattern equal, see, you can see that they're not equal. You can see that the front is longer. Okay, so this is it. See that the front is longer by, see, by like 1.5 inch. Now, to make this equal, all we have to do is take a bust that and to do this we just found out the difference between the front waistline and the back waistline which is 1.5 what i will do is i'm going to be marking the 1.5 down from the bust and then i'll connect this to the apex okay that's simple that is how it is done very simple so because this is not something i'll be doing on this i'm going to be creating another video to explain that what I'll do now is I'm just going to mark the 1.5 okay, so 1.5 here. So all I have to do is connect this 1.5 to this point, and this has created the bust that. And so this is my bust that for the front pattern. Okay, so this here is 1.5 inch. And on the next pattern we're going to be creating, we're going to create the boss that and adjust it and chew it, you know, for us to understand what it really means to create a boss that and a waist that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys were able to understand how we created these boat patterns. See how clean and see how accurate it is. So let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to like this particular video. And if you know someone that is about to you know, start sewing or become a self-taught designer, they just want to learn on their own, you can just share this video with them so they get up to date on how to create a basic pattern, okay? Thank you for watching once more. I love you guys so much. Love and light to you wherever you are. Bye for now.